Welcome to the Multi-Orgasmic Mama podcast, where sexual taboos are broken. I'm Tilly Storm, holistic sex coach and jade egg and tantric sex teacher. I work with luxury lovers, teaching them the art of better sacred sex by helping them remove all their blocks to pleasure, turn on confidence and connection so they can step into their fullest potential and power as humans and alchemists in the 3D. If you'd like to learn how to release shame and guilt destroying your sex life so you can feel fully sexually liberated and free, you can access my How to Release Shame and Guilt training at www.tillystorm.com forward slash shame. This episode is brought to you by the Essentially Embodied Woman Collective. If you're ready to remove all your blocks to pleasure, turn on and feeling confident and sexy in your body through my paid programs and offerings, then head to www.tillystorm.com today. Welcome back, Hot Mamas. It's Tilly, and we're talking about pain during sex. Now, I know we can all appreciate and enjoy a little bit of pain when it's intentional, right? But when it's not, it is not good. So if you have been experiencing pain during sex and it's keeping you from, you know, having more of it or from doing it at all, this episode is for you, my luxury lover. There's several reasons why women experience pain during sex. One of them is maybe you have been experiencing pain since childbirth. Another is that maybe you are not wet enough. So let's talk about childbirth one first. If you have been experiencing pain since having a kid, then it's very likely you've probably been to a doctor already, or you've gone to a pelvic floor physical therapist. And maybe when you have gone to that doctor, they told you that, you know, they referred you to the PT, maybe you went to the PT, you got some results, and it was good, or maybe you didn't. Usually, most people get great results from going to pelvic floor PT. Or maybe your doctor told you that you needed some sort of surgery. Well, the going to the PT option is great and very effective sometimes. And the latter having surgery can be a completely terrifying option to many people and something that they don't want to sign up for, or they want it to be a last resort around. And then, you know, there's this other thing where people experience pain during sex because they're not lubricated enough. They don't have enough wetness down there. And this is more around, you know, when you're going through menopause, or maybe you're just someone who you don't experience a lot of wetness down there. And maybe if you went to the doctor, your doctor probably tried to tell you that you could do some hormone replacement therapy to increase your estrogen. Or maybe your doctor gave you a thing of lube and sent you on your way and said, have fun. (laughs) This is what many doctors do. And to me, this is so freaking sad because this isn't solving an issue. This is putting a bandaid on a much bigger problem. Why aren't you getting wet is my question. Why are you not getting wet? (laughs) Okay, that's the question we should be asking. Maybe it's because you're not wet because you don't even know what you want or you don't even know what you like sexually, much less you are not able to tell your partner. Now, if you were being loved up in the way that worked for you, if you understood your sexuality and your body and how your body got turned on, if you knew and understood your unique path to turn on and pleasure, you wouldn't be dry. But alas, this is the Western medical system that we live in, where we treat the symptoms and not the cause of an issue. Maybe you are not down with hormone replacement therapy, or you've even gone to one of those med spas and you've seen how they do vaginal rejuvenation laser therapy, or maybe the pelvic floor physical therapy didn't get you exactly where you wanted to be with experiencing pain-free sex. I don't know whatever the thing is for you. A lot of the time, the issue is not a physical issue. Okay. A lot of the time it is more emotional and psychosomatic. And that's the part we don't want to look at. So sometimes working through the emotional and the psychosomatic layer is just as important, if not more important than the physical component. Because what you're likely experiencing, if you have done all of these, you know, medical routes or, you know, 
you've been working on this for a while and doing some research, it's probably deeper than you think. Scientific studies have shown that the emotions that you have about sex and your body affect your experience of it. And whether or not you are one of the 20% of women that experiences pain during sex. If this is you, then it could be negative emotions that are going on inside of you that you have about sex that you developed from either negative sexual conditioning or some birth trauma or some sexual trauma in your vagina. This is because the vagina and the cervix, they are like a sponge. They absorb all of the messaging we get. They absorb all of the trauma that we experience, and it creates tension in the muscle and disconnection from the body part that took the blow. And since I don't know a single woman on this planet that hasn't experienced some sort of negative conditioning, sexual trauma, or birth trauma, then it is no wonder that most of us are tense and tight there. Like literally the muscle tissue is tight, like your shoulder. I don't know about you all, but um, I just went and did um, needling in my shoulders because I had so much tension, chronic tension that had built up from stress. And it was like, as soon as I did the needling, it was like, immediate night and day, <laughs> like my shoulder, my, it was my right shoulder could finally relax. And there was no tense, taut muscle anymore. It was like, I would touch my shoulder and be like, Oh my God, I can actually press down. It's like a smooth muscle. Now it doesn't feel like there's this, all of this electric charge in there anymore. Um, uh, so this is what I mean. Your vagina is like a sponge and because of all of the crap we get fed about our bodies and sexuality, it absorbs these messages. And it's like, it creates this tension that it, beca- it it gets so tense that it becomes numb. When I went to my physical therapist, that's what I was telling her. I was like, I have so much built up stress in my shoulders. I just need, I need it to like discharge the shock from my body. You know, like, obviously I do a lot of energy work and all of that on my own, but it was like, no, I, I just needed this one time thing to work past it for, you know, something that would last so that that we could get rid of this initial buildup of energy in my shoulder. So anyway, it's very similar to your vagina. Your vagina holds on to all of that stuff. And it's like, sometimes you just need to go in there and manually work with it to work out the knots and the kinks and the issues going on in there. So I know it can be hard to pay attention to these areas where there is pain or where you would rather avoid because you don't want to go into it. But sometimes it is easier to ignore that pain and push past it than to take and rip the bandaid off of the wound, right? But if you're here and you're listening to this podcast, I'm pretty sure that you're ready to do what it's going to take to actually heal this and to quit putting band-aids on. Okay, so let's talk about holistic options to relieve pain during sex so you can get back at having pleasure in your sex life instead of pain. So we can replace the pain with pleasure. So the first step I want you to take is to rule out any gynecological or physical issues. You've probably already done this, uh, but make sure that there aren't any low lying infections. Um, especially if you're postpartum and you had stitches down there, sometimes there can be really low lying infections that are going on for a long time. Um, make sure that this, there's no issues with your scar tissue. If you tore during birth, or maybe, you know, if you were sexually abused and you have scar tissue from something, um, you know, just make sure that there are no physical issues. And if there are none, and this is the case, then that means there's deeper work to be done, sweetheart. Okay. I know that's probably not what you want to hear, but if this is you, the second thing is, is that you need to be willing to feel it, to heal it. You've got to be willing to get into it and heal it. This is the only way. And I want you to consider it a freaking blessing that you have the opportunity to heal at this level. Because my love, Women, 20, 30, 40, 50, and 
all these years ago did not have the scientific understanding or even the knowledge or even the holistic healing modalities to heal on this level. It is a goddamn blessing that you have access to things that women that came before you did not ever have access to. Okay. And sometimes healing our own stuff is a portal into self-discovery. It's a portal into understanding deeper and greater parts of who we are, of discovering who we really are inside. Some of the most amazing teachers and entrepreneurs on the planet have endured insane amounts of trauma. And you know why they're so impactful and incredible because they, they had to work through it. Okay. So if you see working through something as a blessing and a gift, the way that you come at it, it's so incredibly light years different. It doesn't have to seem like this terrible, long, hard, arduous journey that you have to go on. And it becomes more of like, oh, thank God I get to work through this. I'm so excited that this healing is available to me because it wasn't available to my mother or my grandmother or whoever. So I know that it's not usually something we all just want to like ecstatically sign up for. Yeah, let's heal my sexual trauma. Let's heal my sexual conditioning and, and how terrible it was, right? But consider it a blessing that you get to. And that changes how the experience of your healing goes, okay? You are encoding and putting forth before you and saying and putting out a bold statement to the universe that, I want this to be a pleasurable experience. I want healing my lack of pleasure to be pleasurable. And guess what it then gets to be? It gets to be pleasurable. Pleasure heals. <laughs> so it is all in how you approach it. So yes, my love, you have to be willing to feel it, to heal it, to connect to the part of you you've been trying to ignore, to bring breath back into the part of you that you haven't breathed into in years or decades, to bring life back to this part of you that's frozen, that you've cut off from yourself, that you've completely disconnected from. So you do this by doing conscious breath practices, by paying attention to this part of your body you've been trying to either ignore or override and not listen to just so you could get by. This is a protective mechanism that you built and that served you in some way, but it is no longer serving you and you're healing from here on out. So there's so many different things you can do. You can start a jade egg practice. You can start a conscious self-pleasure practice. So I know that some of these things that I talk about on this podcast are not backed by science, like the jade egg practice or tantra. And maybe you consider these more new agey things and it doesn't really appeal to you uh, but it also doesn't really matter as long as it works. Okay. I wasn't like, oh yeah, I love crystals. Sign me up for crystals. You know, like <laughs> let me heal my negative sexual conditioning by putting a crystal up my pussy. That was not my thinking. I promise you. Okay. So I didn't believe in rocks and crystals and, and energetic healing abilities of crystals when I tried it. And this, these are still things I don't really prescribed to. So there are many holistic methodologies that haven't been studied by science still, and there's a lot to be proven. But I've also seen and healed myself through these, you know, new agey or woo woo things, right? And so many women I know have too. So even if it means um, that you have to go in to do some embodiment work and actually work in the body to feel it, to heal it, you know, it's worth it if it works in the end. Okay. So yes, people have healed vulvodynia. They've healed menstrual problems. They've healed birth trauma. They've healed sexual trauma. They've healed religious conditioning around their sexuality and their body, just like me from doing some of these more woo woo practices. But you know, if it works, it works, and you can't knock that. And also, you'll see that the women who diss these modalities or who, you know, totally throw them out of the water and say, oh, that doesn't work, right? 
a lot of that comes from negative patriarchal conditioning that uh, that doesn't want women to step into their fullest potential and power. I did an interview with someone several months ago, and she just kept giving me every single reason under the sun why she couldn't use a jade egg. And all I could see behind it was, I'm terrified of owning my sexuality. I'm terrified of actually becoming multi-orgasmic. This doesn't feel safe to me. And that was the energy that behind all of the excuses, she said, well, my vagina is too tight. I can't use a jade egg. And she would just go on and on and on about every single reason why she couldn't do it. And all I kept hearing was, I'm not even willing to try because I don't believe I can really have that. Oh, so freaking sad. And that leads me to my third point. Be willing to try new things. Okay. We are living in an era where we have so many healing modalities available to us. Often we don't know where to turn or who to look to for answers. You know who always has the answer? Your own damn body. Your body knows what it needs and you will heal when you are ready. You will heal when you are ready. And if you tuned into your body and asked her, what would she say? What would your body say? Maybe she isn't a yes to the jade egg practice. Maybe that's what's true for her because maybe she does have a really tight yoni and those muscles, they're not ready to be worked with with a jade egg. And there's other practices and techniques from Tantra, like dearmoring techniques that we need to do, or maybe just somatic mind body work that needs to be done before you even do any manual work, right? Your body knows what it needs if you will tune in and ask, but hardly anyone ever asks. Okay. But even then, I want you to be willing to try new things. You do not have to believe in crystals. You do not have to believe in these new age things for something like the jade egg practice to work. I never believed in that sort of thing either, but I had read somewhere that you could heal sexual guilt and shame from religion, uh, by doing the jade egg practice. And as a curious person, I decided to give it a go. And two months later, I was able to release all of that shame, the guilt around my body and sexuality. I became multi-orgasmic. I learned to love my body for the first time. I hated my boobs. I hated my belly. They were saggier than they were before I had babies. I didn't like it. It drove me nuts. I didn't even want to have sex with the lights on or with my shirt off. I got willing to try something. I checked in with my body. And she was yes to that practice. So it took giving something a try, giving it a chance. So you don't need to prescribe to certain healing abilities or to get all into the magic of it, right? Just ask your body because she knows. So maybe it's not the jade egg practice for you. Maybe it's actually just honoring that she is a no because you have spent years or decades overriding your no for so long that she's like, Oh, hell no, we're not sticking anything up there right now because you have been ignoring me for all these years. And I'm freaking done with you ignoring me. So nope, you don't get to do that either. What if you honored that voice? What if you just let her be a no for some time? And then ask her what she needs to come out of the no? Wow. <laughs> like that's the connection that I want you to be able to have with your body, the relationship that I want you to have to your body. If you were to relate to your body in that sort of way, how would it change your experience of your body? How would it change your own self image, your body image issues? If you really tuned in and asked her what she wanted and needed. Okay. Maybe she doesn't want to do the jade egg practice. It's okay. You can do different dearmoring, mind, body, somatic practices, all that kind of stuff. It can be just as effective, but whatever you do, just connect with your body, check in to see if that's what she really wants. Cause she already knows. Okay. So let's recap hot mama, three steps to heal pain during sex. So you can actually have pleasurable sex again. Number one, rule out any gynecological and physical issues by going to a doctor or physical therapist or something. Number two, be willing to feel it, to heal it. And number three, be willing to try new things 
and ask your body what new things she wants to try. So if you're ready to get started with any holistic sexual healing practices, this is what I teach. This is what I do. You can download the Jade Egg Starter Guide if you're interested in that, or you can download my Ignite Your Desire e-guide at www.tillystorm.com. In the e-guide, you will learn all sorts of different um, ways that, you know, and reasons that we get locked up in our bodies. We go into fight, flight, freeze, or fawn. Our nervous systems are completely haywire. Most of us, our nervous systems are way outside of a window of tolerance and we're either frozen in our bodies or we are going out, you know, doing things sexually that really aren't healthy or good for us because we're overriding our body's responses. There's just so many, <laughs> Uh, nuances to working on your sexuality and healing it. And, and this e-guide and ebook really helps you to have the deeper understanding of how the nervous system affects our sexuality and how we need to work at the nervous system and the unconscious layer to really integrate our sexuality. So we do feel whole in our sexuality. We feel good about it. And we're not experiencing freaking pain during sex. Cause honey, the only pain I want you experiencing sex is the kind that you intentionally want. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that reminds me of Rihanna's song S and M. I think that's what it's called. You should go listen to it. It's fun. I was rocking out to it the other day. Um, but it was all about sadism and masochism and how chains and whips turn her on. I was like, yeah, girl, you got it. <laughs> yes. Sometimes that's great. I just don't want you experiencing pain. That's not intentional. All right, my loves go check out the e-guide or download the Jade egg starter guide at tillystorm.com. And I'll see you on the other side. Bye. <laughs> 